Welcome back to TV3 New Day. It's time for the health segment. And in light of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we're continuing our conversation on cancer in general. Eventually, we'll narrow down to breast cancer. Last week, we started our conversation by finding out what are the causes uh, or what could be the causes of cancer and breast cancer and what could be some of the symptoms uh, that indicate that you have been infected or affected. This week, we're taking a look at the myths and misconceptions of cancer in general. And there are a lot of people who have asked many questions as to what could lead to cancer to even grow um, even further in your body and spread to other parts of your body. What are some of the things you can do in order to prevent yourself from getting cancer? If you have a family member who has been diagnosed with cancer, does it mean that automatically you also become uh, prone to developing this disease as well? And joining me in the studios, I have Dr. Asala Samson. Uh, he's a general practitioner at Medifem Multi. Uh, multi-concept specialist multi-specialist hospital pardon me so medifem multi-specialist hospital good morning thank you so much for joining me and i'm sure you've heard the myths over and over and over again but quickly just for people who missed out on the introduction last week let's quickly run around um cancer in general what it is and what could cause cancer all right so um thank you very much uh yes like you said there are a lot of misconceptions yeah and so understanding cancer um, cancer basically is where the body's cells, the mm. cell is the basic unit of a human body. Yeah. So if they begin to multiply in a way that is unchecked, that is cancer. Okay. So the cells become abnormal mm. and they begin to multiply in an unchecked way. Okay. Every human being has cells multiplying. That is why when you started off, you were a child, mm -hmm. but you've increased in size mm -hmm. and you've become, your, your shapes and everything have, have changed as you grow up. Okay. Now, in cancer, this normal process has been hijacked. Okay. So the normal process where cells would increase in size, complexity, has become hijacked, and so the cells begin to just increase out of the normal boundaries, the normal controls. Mm. So the control on the cell increasing and decreasing has is lost. Okay. So then these cells are now abnormal and they begin to spread everywhere. Mm. And that is what the, the cancer basically is in a nutshell. Okay. And what could be some of the reasons why someone would develop, um, you know, cancer? Right. So every cell uh -huh. in the human body has genetic material. We mm -hmm. all know about DNA. Yeah. So DNA is the, is the code, is the instruction that the cell needs to function. Yeah. So if a cell is going to develop it reads the DNA and sees that, okay, I'm supposed to be a muscle cell. I'm supposed to be a fat cell, mm. those kind of things. Mm. So for cancers to occur, there must be a damage with this DNA. DNA, okay. And that occurs through various ways. Mm. So that is where we, we um, look at. If you look at, there are cancers that are... Um, can be caused by viruses. Okay. Yes. Like the so, HPV. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So the HPV virus enters the cell mm -hmm. and then it changes the DNA. So now the cells begin to okay. divide and multiply in ways that are not normal. Mm -hmm. We also have um, hepatitis B, okay. which can also do the same thing in the liver. Oh. The HIV can also do that. There are quite a number of viruses there. There's Epstein-Barr virus, which causes um, Beckett lymphoma in children. Okay. So cancers can affect all ages. All right. It's not only about adults. Mm. Even children have have cancer yes. as well. Okay. So the first myth uh, that confuses a lot of people. So if I have a family member who's been diagnosed with cancer, does it mean I'm definitely going to get cancer? All right. So um, I just want to. So we said that cancers are due to a defect in the gene. Yeah. Right. So this gene. Usually, we pass on our genes to our children. To children. Right. Okay. So, we pass on our genes to our children. That is why you look like your mom or your dad, mm -hmm. your sisters, and they all look alike. Alike, yes. But it depends on how this gene was affected. There are some cancers that are due to, you know, your lifestyle, certain things that you do. Mm. So, they affect certain genes, but those are not the genes that pass on. Okay. There are others that, because they are... Um, intrinsic they they are part and parcel of the gene mm -hmm. they can pass on okay yes okay so one of the things that everyone should be aware of and this is a problem that we have a lot in ghana mm. people are not aware of um what my father died of yeah, what my mother well, died of you don't know that they had these things you just mm -hmm. hear that oh 
no yare and then the person died yeah but if you are aware that it's because of so and so cancer then you can take precautions mm. and you can also um screen yourself earlier okay yes but yes some cancers can be passed on not all of them okay but some can like okay so um some types of breast cancer can be passed on. What? Yes. I'm sure you have heard of um, Angelina Jolie, the, yes. the US actress. True. Yes. So she yeah. has her mother, her grandmother, both having both breast having, cancer. Yeah. So she, she knew that the, exactly. Yeah. So she had both breasts taken off. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are some people who, there are genes, the basic code that tells their cells what to do also leads them to have cancer. Okay, so if you're talking about genes being passed on and that could lead to you also getting cancer, that means that if I don't have any trace of cancer in my family line or my bloodline, then I'm free. Okay, so like I said, um, there are some defects in the, in the gene that are passed on. Mm. Others are not. are not. Okay. Others are due to environmental factors. We mm -hmm. mentioned viruses. Yeah. You don't pass on viruses. Mm. And all those cancers caused by viruses cannot be passed on. Yeah. But so um, if you contract hepatitis B as a child, mm. you are not adequately vaccinated. It means you have a risk of getting it. Okay. That is not something you pass on to your mm. children. If you contract HIV, you can get it. You don't pass that one on to your children. Okay. Then other risk factors that we, we are all, I'm sure, aware of smoking. Mm hmm smoking can damage the genetic material okay. and that way you can and then other chemicals that people are exposed to mm. it can damage your genetic material so in that case you are not going to pass that on okay because your the genetic material you came to life with is fine speaking of chemicals we have some plants that are grown with chemicals even though that's even wrong you know we have pesticides that are being sprayed on plants to avoid um you know them from going bad and all of that are these all eventually going to have an effect on us because now we've gotten to a point where it looks like most of the food that we eat have too many chemicals in them and we have people complaining already that that's probably why cancer is on the rise across the world is that really true all right so the reason why cancer is on the rise is um, because we are living longer okay that is one of the reasons and you, earlier, if you died at a young age, nobody would bat an eye. It's normal. But now, as you live longer, you are exposed to more things. Mm. So the incidence of damage to your 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 genetic oh, code yeah. it increases. Mm. But it is true that there are quite a number of chemicals now that we are exposed to. Mm -hmm. There are more things that can cause damage. On the specific um, case about pesticides. Yeah. There hasn't been um, conclusive research. Okay. Because we can all assume that okay, um, those times we're not eating this. Today we're eating this. Maybe it's that. Mm -hmm. it, it's an assumption. Oh, okay. And we have to take it through the scientific method to find out if it is or uh, it isn't. So that means that even leaving a bottle of water in the car, because they also say that if yeah, you leave it in the that. car for, in the car for maybe like an hour or two, yeah. you shouldn't drink it again because there are some chemicals in the plastic that are transferred into the water and yeah. makes it cancerous. Yes. Any scientific backing for that? There isn't as of now. Okay. There isn't as of now. There's a lot going on because of this issue of radiation. Yeah. Okay. So now um, radiation has been used in a way that is sometimes confusing for a lot of people. The light that is here mm. is radiation. Okay. Yes. Electromagnetic spectrum is, is far reaching. Mm. There are some parts of it that have high energy. Mm. They are called ionizing. It means that they can cause a change in every cell or atom that is exposed to. Okay. But there are others that don't do that. We've been exposed wow. to the sun for so many years and they say that causes cancer after what 9 a.m or so <laughs> you, shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't expose yourself to the sun too much because you're going to get cancer if you want vitamin d then i think it's between um 6 a.m and 7 a.m or so no that is the, that all a lie there are some people who are prone to certain cancer and even in the light it's not the visible light. There's something okay. called the ultraviolet mm. yes the ultraviolet is the part of the light spectrum you don't see it as you look up the sun, yeah. you don't say, oh, this ultraviolet, this is infrared. You only see the light. Ah. But the ultraviolet part is the one that has higher energy okay. and can also cause damage to your genetic material. Mm. So the whole thing is, what are the things that can cause damage to my genetic material? If there is anything like that, then that can cause cancer. How would I know? That means I have to test. But anyways, we went on the streets to find out if people had questions uh, concerning the myths and misconceptions of cancer. Let's take a look. The cause of breast cancer to me has still not 
been clarified well. I remember way back when I was in the Polytechnic, I attended a seminar at Latter-day Saints and um, we were taught that is a lamp. When you see the lamp developing, then it means there is something wrong with your breast. So I started researching on it. I know women, when we reach our month, you feel some things in it. So when I felt it at that time, I rushed to the hospital to say, oh, I may be developing breast cancer. And then they told me that was normal. So the difference between that being normal and then the abnormal one, that is where the ambiguity to me comes from. Because I know that something has to be in. But when do you clarify that something which is in, whether it's a good one or the, the old one? Uh, maybe someone will say, then they had breast cancer. But, hey, I'm going to say, uh, phone to me my breast cancer. Nah, and nah, scan them my breast, breast cancer. And they mean into me, share doctor, maybe sano. I learned uh, a lady when your breast is usually found out, um, that can also fight against cancer. Is it true? I would like to let him or her to teach me more or how to get it, what I would do or what I should not do to avoid me not getting the breast cancer. <music> Very valid questions there by people on the street. And yes. these are questions that many people ask as well. So please go ahead and answer them. All right. So um, breast cancer worldwide mm. is the second commonest cause of cancer. In Ghana, it's um, among females. Again, it's between it's breast and cervical. I think breast is increasing breast is the leading because now, now we are yeah. controlling cervical yes. cancer. Right. So it is quite prevalent mm. the prevalence means that it is important for us to try and pick it up early okay once we pick it up early we can take out the cancerous part of it mm. and you'll be fine okay the earlier we pick it the better now every woman when she goes through her monthly cycle during the time of ovulation you may have some increased lumpiness of the breast yeah which is normal. Okay. Yes, which is normal. The the problem um, with the lumpiness as the, the 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 person asked was that you know in our bid to educate everyone, yeah. sometimes some of the information slips through, mm -hmm. right? Because um, breast self examination is not the whole, every time in the month you are supposed to do it. Yeah. It's after your menses. Right after. After a week after your menses okay. is the best time to do your breast self exam. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's not every time. Mm. Otherwise, you just have a heart attack. Sometimes you just feel it and then you you'll be anxious. Panic, yeah. So yes, you may have lumpiness in the breast during your menses. Wait after your menses. A week. A after. week after you can check it. Okay. Okay. But um, it's also important to always have. A clinical breast examination once a year okay in spite of your own breast exam do a clinical breast exam once a year that is why we have October as a month mm. so that everybody even if you have done your own breast self exam every month the clinical one has been shown to be better yeah than the self, self examination, examination. Okay. so you should have that okay so that that concerns her question about mm. the lumpiness all right right the, the second one was asking about what causes cancer? Is yes. it a phone? Yeah. And all that. So I mentioned the, the radiation and the fact that we have ionizing, non-ionizing. Mm. Yes. So the phones, yes, they do emit radiation. And um, the radiation they emit is similar to like microwave. When you use a microwave. So mm -hmm. people are saying that you should microwave you food microwave, and all yes. that. But the, the whole point is that it is non-ionizing. Okay. Right. In WHO has classified... Um, some of these radiations as possible mm. because somebody somewhere did some research somewhere mm -hmm. and said that um, phone use can cause something, but it has not, you know, the scientific process, it has to be tested. Okay. Somebody can make a claim, but you have to test it. All right. So currently, it is not tested and proven that phones, phones. cause. Is cancer. that what you mean by non-ionizing? I'm confused here because okay. you mentioned that something was non-ionizing. Yes. Okay. Non-ionizing is um, it's a classification of radiation. Mm. We classify radiation as ionizing and non-ionizing. Okay. Ionizing is radiation that has enough energy to cause changes in an atom. Mm. 
thereby changes in your DNA. Okay. Right. Non-ionizing does not have the energy to do that. Mm. Like the light that we use, it is non-ionizing. Light, uh, microwave is non-ionizing. Okay. Okay. Gamma rays are ionizing. Sometimes CT scans are ionizing. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Um, now, also, there are people who think that when you get cancer, you should reduce your sugar intake because the cells feed on the sugar, and that's what causes them to multiply. Is that true? Well, um, so like we said, the cancer is the cells. They're abnormal. Yeah. They're not following any instruction. Mm -hmm. They don't want to listen to the, the way they're supposed to be, and they're just, they just developing. Yeah. In doing that, they need energy. And the main energy of the body is um, sugar. Glucose, yeah. Yes, glucose. But the body is um, a very wonderful thing that God created. Mm -hmm. You can decide to fast for 21 days, as many people in Ghana do. Yeah. But they still have energy. Mm -hmm. They still have energy because your body begins to break down other things to give you the energy. Mm. So what the cancer does is this. Your body is already using glucose to survive okay. you need it as you are talking mm. as as you are looking mm. all these things use energy mm -hmm. now the cancer is stealing this energy and then using it to grow itself so stopping the sugar is um i mean when you when if you try and think through it may seem like it will work but then because your body will produce the sugar, sugar by itself anyway exactly. so it will still feed on the sugar exactly Oh, wow. Okay. And there are people who are actually living off sugar because of that. Um, let me ask this as well. So we're going back to the chemicals because people who work in salons, even, even us who go to get our hairs treated and all of that, they tell us that when you use those chemicals too often, you know, you're going to get cancer. So sometimes you're asked not to um, relax your hair till after about two or three months. So don't do regular. Some people do it almost every other month, and that, they say, is a problem. I'm also reading that the people who actually work in these salons and these places that, um, you know, get them to work with chemicals constantly are very likely to also get cancer. Okay. So, um, like we said, the damage is to the genetic material, yeah. and chemicals are a major part mm -hmm. of it. So, um, there are chemicals that have been proven mm. to give cancer. Mm. Arsenic. Okay. Um, the nickel. There is uh, asbestos. Okay, so what products can we find some of these chemicals in so that we okay, can Okay, so sure? asbestos, it, it, it used to be a roofing material. Mm. So if you go to some parts of Accra and they have these roofing sheets, which are not um, aluminium, mm. they are a bit, um, was it like clay, a yeah. bit, it's yeah. asbestos. And that could cause? Yes, asbestos exposure, not really with the roofing, but those who use it. Okay. Because as they are using, those who make the roofing sheets, because they have to cut it. Ah. They have small, small bits of asbestos. Okay. It enters into their lungs. It causes wow. disease. It causes cancer. Okay. Then we have other. So it was noted in um, various classes of workers. Okay. So nowadays, in every place where you work, that's why I have occupational safety. Mm -hmm. So if it's a known carcinogenic carcinogenic means something that can bring about cancer yeah, yeah. then it is limited okay so people who work with x-rays mm. and ct scans they have limits where they are supposed to check occasionally to make sure that they don't have the exposure limits ah. people who um, work in uh, atomic energy they are exposed to ionizing radiation okay. so they, they have limits to make sure that they don't they are not exposed hmm. the um so the hair products they do cause damage to the to the skin to the cells mm -hmm. but whether or not they damage the genetic material is not is yet to be okay yeah all right going back on the streets to find out what people know about breast cancer and also about cancer let's do that quickly and we'll come back a pregnant woman is asking if um you know she can undergo cancer treatment whilst pregnant take a look at this first <laughs> Yes, I be out the phone. She unu phone o benya breast cancer. E be a o discuss she unu phone o benya breast cancer. Na me wo eh we met ba ko be we nya breast cancer. Ye nim ni e di ba. Na onu anyo obi onu msa. Anyo obi o ya basa basa. Enti ye de nim. E so mi de adi ba ko e ya me e ya me ti ni se ye si ska any phone. One thing I know about the breast cancer is. From research, cancer cells are currently found over um, in most people. So it's about early 
check up. So if one doesn't check constantly, and uh, especially in the ladies, breast cancer develops. Alcohol consumption can cause breast cancer, especially when uh, uh, females are addicted to smoking and uh, uh, taking off uh, a lot of alcohol. Yes, it can cause uh, breast cancer. I'm told it's hereditary. If any member of your family has one, then you have to be on your toe. And I've also witnessed um, what they've been saying, that early treatment kills it. Because I did have um, a classmate at Poly who developed such lumps. And at a very age, good stage, the early stage, they removed it and she's been fine ever so. I don't know anything about that one, but I've been hearing people saying that, like, especially when, let's go in this way, in relationship, how a boy touches your breast, that one is no good. But aside that, and the way, the way you put, you handle money, you put your money inside your pockets or your bra, it can cause breast cancer. <laughs> okay, well, I see you're laughing. <laughs> okay, so there are a number of things that people have said. Um, which of them have you taken out? There's an issue of recurrence of, you know, cancer in your body. And people think that no matter what you do, once you've been diagnosed with cancer once, it will definitely come again. Okay. So, um, breast cancer, like I said, it's a um, leading cause in, in women yeah. nowadays. Yeah. And so, we want to try and pick it early. So, early detection is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Early detection is very important. When we pick it and it is... It is limited to the breast, some part of the breast. We yeah. can take it out. Okay. Remember that cancer cells are abnormal cells, mm -hmm. and they try to spread around. Yeah. So they will spread. If we pick it early, we pick it in one location, we can take it out. The occasions where we have taken out um, a breast lump and later on discovered that it has come again means that, unknown to us, some of the cells left and went somewhere else. But with early detection, you really do not get those things. Okay. But um, when it is late, mm. when it is late, that is where the risk increase. Because when it's late, it has started to spread. Okay. We start giving um, chemotherapy to try and shrink it. Yeah. And then after that, come and take it out. But at that point, we are on the lookout. Mm. Because it may be that we missed it. Okay. Because once it's late, there, 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 is, there is very there's a probability that it has spread. Okay. There are some stages of breast cancer that we cannot do anything about. What stage is that? Stage that is stage four. four. Stage okay. four is where we have spread. We call spread metastasis. Mm. So it can spread to other parts of the body. There is no way we can go and take away the cancer cells from all the parts of the body. So what we do is that we give treatment to try and ease the pain and the burdens and all that. Yeah. That is what we want to avoid. Okay. We want okay. to avoid that as much as possible. Mm. So if women get screened early, we can even take it out and you not have it. You have it if too. you have it at an advanced stage, maybe we can give you chemo to shrink it and mm. take it out. Okay. You will be watching you for some time to see if it will spread and then we can get it out. Okay. Now, the other thing is that because cancer cells are cells that are increasing rapidly, mm -hmm. When it gets a certain stage, we give chemo. Yeah. Now, chemotherapy targets all cells that increase rapidly. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when you are pregnant, the baby there, mm -hmm. the cells are also increasing rapidly. Yeah. So when you are pregnant, we do not give you chemotherapy. How do you treat someone who has cancer while it's pregnant then? So we will have to wait to the, to the pregnancy. Or if the person wants the pregnancy terminated, terminated then you can do that yes. but the, otherwise you would have to wait till the person delivers before you can start so would it not be too late by then so what the danger there uh -huh. is that as we give chemotherapy this innocent child is being exposed to chemicals that is going to affect the child okay so the child will come out and because the cells couldn't grow it will not be it's formed. Be yeah. Yes. Yeah. The child will be abnormal okay. when it's born. Ooh. So that early detection is key. Definitely. My final question. Yesterday, I came across a video on social media where a cancer cell had been taken out of someone's body, allegedly. It was, it was placed in a plate. I don't even know what it's supposed to look like, by the way, but it looked very dark, like a dark jelly-like liquid. And, you know, someone, they, they tried to see how it would react, you know, with gold. 
and also with garlic. And so they, put, they tried putting garlic by it and it kept moving away from the garlic. And then they placed gold on the plate and it acted like a magnet. So immediately it started dragging the cancer cell towards um, you know, the, the product. And so people were saying that that means that if you have cancer, you should avoid wearing gold um, jewelry and all of that. And maybe you should take in more garlic. Is that really true? I don't know if there was any scientific backing. This is something I came across on social media just last night. All right. So um, the research mm -hmm. or whatever it is, mm -hmm. first of all, we don't know even the cancer cell yeah. per se. The interesting fact, I mean, those of you who follow I mean, those of us, sorry, who mm. follow horoscopes. Yeah. There is, there is this um, sign, cancer. Yeah. It's shaped like a crab, mm. right? The reason why the, this disease entity is called cancer is that in the olden times, when people used to have these lumps, and the doctors of those times um, wanted to find out what it is, the way it had spread, mm. it looked like a crab with all those things around. Okay. So that's where the term cancer comes from. Wrong. That's just by the way. Okay. Now, um... Concerning this alleged research, unfortunately, nowadays, a lot of things get through that are not proven mm -hmm. and not certified. Yeah. There are things that can happen in the lab, but do not happen in the body. Mm -hmm. So every drug that we give to a patient, first they try it out in the lab, mm -hmm. they try it in animals, okay. they try it in human beings, before they see all the various... Um, side effects, profiles, and then it's given out. Mm -hmm. Now, to say that because a cell that was put in a medium that we don't know if it is even similar to a normal human medium, yeah. moved away from garlic and moved towards gold, is very simplistic. Okay. And it's not something that you should, you should, you should take... Seriously? Yes. Okay. You shouldn't take it seriously. Yeah. A lot of the information that you need, there are credible sites. Yeah. There are credible sites that you can look at. If you search for breast cancer screening. Mm -hmm. There are credible places that you can look for guidelines. Yeah. There are sites that will tell you as a woman what to do mm -hmm. to help yourself. Okay. It's, it's social media, unfortunately, is not, um, it's not regulated. Just like how cancer is unregulated. Yeah. Yes, social media is unregulated. Okay. So everything gets in there. Well, so make sure that you get screened at least once a year. Yes. And since it's the month of uh, breast cancer awareness, you might as well take advantage of it and get screened as well. I also learned from last week that women who are 40 and above have to get a mammogram. Yes, every and year. So if you're 40 and above, you have to go for a mammogram. But then if you're below 40, then you can do the self-examination or get an ultrasound. Yes. Okay. So make sure you do that. It's important. And thank you so much, Dr. Asala Samson, uh, pardon me, Medifem Multi- Ex specialist. Wow, shame on me. <laughs> Medifem Multi Specialist Hospital. Thank you so much for educating us on the myths and yeah. misconceptions of breast cancer and cancer in general. And we hope that you've learned a thing or two about it.